the mystery class. Little is known about these dragons due to their stealthy and sneaky nature. Dragons in this class are generally more feared than those in others. It includes the most diverse and interesting range of dragons, most of which exhibit extremely rare and unique traits. Uh, a bit vague. <laughs> but uh, this class is really cool. It's full of dragons with really awesome abilities and the coolest concepts that I would love to explore further. So yes, the mystery class. The one that everyone is looking forward to. I'll be looking at why these specific set of dragons fit into this category and why some are not mystery class dragons. The first categories are the welders. Well, duh. <laughs> Straight away with the awful puns. Dragons that collect objects and either weld them together or attach it to themselves. The most prime example of this is the armor wing. They find pieces of metal and attach it to their body, as they are scaleless underneath. This adds levels of protection, including being fire resistant. My guy be mining some iron armor here. <laughs> are the metal pieces covered in glue, or do they like to stick to the body even before weldering on? Well, Snorlout couldn't pull out an axe before the dragon welded it to itself, so someone's pouring some glue. Gorilla. 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 So someone's pouring some gorilla glue on that, or sealing it with some flex tape. Is that relevant me? No, it's not. Oh, hey, gorilla. Judging by the scrap metal being made of iron, this means this dragon must emit some sort of magnetic field somehow. The mystery. <gasps> The metal stays there before being permanently attached. In a pinch, the dragon sets alight their metal and fling it at the enemy. A risky strategy, revealing their vulnerable skin. I think it's used as a last resort. One last powerful hit to remove the threat or make the dragon flee. But also it could make itself lighter so it can fly faster. So how does this dragon weld the metal onto itself? Their blinding firepower, of course. Some similarities to the Deadly Nadder? The dragon produces an intensely hot flames, often blinding opponents if stared at, and it tends to emit sparks. All of this dragon's behaviours and abilities are centred around the collecting and the application of metal to its body, which I guess is the unexplained part. It's evolved in a unique way to cover its weakness. But that magnetic field is quite interesting because everything does produce an electric magnetic field, but only at a uh, microscopic or atomic level. Somehow this creature has advanced it. Yes! But in real life there's no real animals that have large magnetic fields, only many that can detect it, but it's usually used to orientate themselves to know where north, south, east. <laughs> The dragon is aloof, along with not being a very common one as well. Thus rumours and legends form about this dragon, becoming a blacksmith's worst nightmare. Get out, me swamp! In a similar breath, and most likely closely related, is the bone napper. Inspired by hermit crabs, finding mollusk shells as a home to protect themselves, bone nappers collect bones and attaches it to itself as armour, covering its thin, soft scales. This action in itself is quite a mystery. We know why, but how? The bones seemingly just stick to the creature, therefore allowing it to do some abilities, like roaring. The dragon is known to search for years for specific bone pieces. There are individuals that prefer some other materials like lava or ice in conjunction to bones. I think it would be cool to see a bit more of them and find out how that works. Perhaps their saliva hardens and acts like a strong adhesive. But it's flex tape from before. <laughs> Unlike the armor wing, the firepower doesn't support the main mystery, but perhaps a thundering roar makes up for the fear factor this dragon was missing. The roar is infamous with tall tales of it deafening people and melting the flesh off their bones. In reality, it could just blow objects away. Wait, blow objects away? <laughs> let, let me do some quick maths. Oh, da 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 da. Oh, ooh. Oh, carry the one. Ah, ah. If that object weighs that amount, and the dragon is that distance, using perfect pixel measurements, I believe it is very strong. But hey, it's just a theory. A theory where I'm not intelligent enough to figure it out, so yeah. A surprising factor though is the dragon is really sneaky, almost silent flight, until it lands behind Glover. A real world comparisons would be like bats, as they are silent flyers themselves, because of their light bones and blood circulation through the wings. Don't ask me how that actually works. Perhaps the bone nappers have something similar, perhaps particularly good blood circulation, 
compared to other dragons. And I assume all dragons have like bones as they can all fly. Oh, and the fact that the dragon likes to wear them as fashion accessories. So with its silent flight enabling it to sneak up on enemies, a thundering roar that terrifies the hardest vikings, and a weird quirk of collecting bones to protect its thin scaled ass, makes it a great dragon fitting for the mystery class. The Smothering Smoke Breath. As its name suggests, this dragon can secrete smoke from its skin and firepower, supporting its stealthy nature. They are the same colour as the smoke to act like camouflage, as the pack rely on it to steal metal for their nests. The idea comes from the stereotypes of magpies, I guess, <laughs> stealing shiny things to build their nests. In reality, it's just a bird being opportunistic and finding anything it can find to build its nests, especially in densely populated suburbs. Like the armor wing, this species uses its firepower to weld metal together to make the metal nests. The fire is so hot, it can make melt down the metal in a matter of moments. If we base most of the metal off of iron, that means the firepower is 1538 degrees celsius, or 2800 degrees fahrenheit, for you plebs out there. Oh look, an idiot! Although small, they use safety in numbers, hunting as a pack behind walls of smoke to intimidate its prey, making them unsure how large that animal really is, flying fast so the enemy can't even keep up as well. As you can tell, the Smothering Smoke Breath use smoke a lot, it's almost in every activity they participate in, so it begs the question, how do they even produce the smoke? Well it's something that Vikings don't know, but perhaps our current technology and knowledge could figure out. Technology. But that will be in another video when I explain all of this. So far, I'm just explaining why these dragons are in the Mistu class, and that's why that- <coughs> <coughs> Bloody, bloody smothering smoke press! <laughs> Lastly, in this category is the Sword Stealer. What a great name. <laughs> the Sword Stealer is almost identical to the Armor Wing in terms of abilities, but turned up to 11. <laughs> the dragon has metallic skin, which attracts other metal objects, using their orange firepower to melt it right down to make it a part of its body, adding layers of metal. Layers! What I find fascinating is that the different Sword Stealers have different metal on them, depending on the flame color. But again, it's one of those situations where I go into far more detail and the science <laughs> behind it when I do a video on this dragon. For now, the different coloured flames could play a part into the mystery of these dragons. They spend their time looking for more metal, sniffing veins and stealing from armories, but I imagine a giant metal bird can't be so quiet. In fact, how do they even fly? <laughs> One, two, three, four? And the dragon's got, that dragon's got multiple heads! Which is what this category is about. These used to belong in fear class, but now it's a complete mystery on why they have lots of noggins. I believe they aren't really mystery dragons, but they don't really fit into any other class. And the mystery class is like the kindergarten for parents, dumping their children off there so they don't have to deal with them within the day. So I guess it has nowhere else to go. Zipplebacks are interesting. Along with two heads, are two separate firepowers, gas and spark. This is a unique fire type, complementing the multiple heads, even though their personalities don't always mix. They combine their fire attacks in a flaming auroboreous formation, or used as a signal flare. Truly creative and versatile, but their firepower isn't really too mysterious. One fires green vaporous gas, and the other lights it with a quick spark. From the gas fired, introduces a stealth option to sneak up towards their enemies. Zipplebacks are solitary hunters using the gas as smokescreen to ambush their prey. They are fairly nimble flies and strong. Using their powerful necks and thick skulls makes them formidable close range of weapons. But you know the saying two heads are better than one? It may not look like it for Bath and Belch, but Zipplebacks are quite intelligent. Two heads used to problem solve or complete multiple actions at once. Like one head sleeping and the other one looking out for danger. The, the two heads themselves aren't mysterious. Animals in the wild have a chance to get polycephaly. It's a birth defect where the twin embryos don't quite split whilst developing, and usually the animal dies early, not passing down that genetic mutation, as in most cases, it is more harmful than good. Either requiring more nutrients to support both systems, or extra difficulty in escaping predators, or foraging for food. But for whatever reasons, earlier ancestors of the Zipplebacks gained the genetic mutation and passed it down as it apparently seems to support the survival of this animal. Over time, the two heads complemented their skill set 
with behavioural survival tactics to firepower that only they could create alone. Oh. Wrong head. But do you know what's worse than two heads? Four! It's the Venus flytrap of dragons, the Snap Trapper. This creature has elements of this category and the next, but we'll see what that is later on. These are stealthy hunters using their camouflage to hunt prey hiding amongst vegetation, disguised as plants. The mystery is how they lure their victims, secreting a tantalizing sweet aroma of chocolate? Did they even have chocolate in Viking times? No. Anyway, this stimulates the hunger of dragons and humans nearby, luring them to their trap. But in self-defense, they can release the most unpleasant scent to ward off large titan wind dragons. Now, upon further research, in the real world, there isn't really cases of using sweet scent to lure in prey, but definite tactics to deter predators. Skunks have glands by their butts that use a sulfur chemical compound. So why can't snap trappers do something similar? I mean, they can send out a mist made of methane, same gas spewing abilities as the zipple bags. They just don't really have a way to light it. Oh, and it's invisible and awful for the environment. More than 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Screw the cow farts. <coughs> we need to kill all the snap trappers. Not only that, they spit metal melting acid. Say that five times fast. Metal melting acid, melting metal out of metal, 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 and have one of the most powerful venom of all dragons, only being defeated by the threat tail and the slither wing. With all of this, the foreheads and the jaw splitting, no wonder the Vikings will be very fearful this dragon and the smell of chocolate. <laughs> this dragon was once in fear class with the Zippelback, but now the scariest dragons are in the mystery. But I guess it's mysterious in how they produce those odors or exist with four bloody heads. The next category is luring dragons, ones that hide in wait and pounce on their prey using a variety of unexplained ways. Like I said, the Snap Trapper already fits into this category, but we've just explained it. So we'll move on to the Death Song. Hearing that sweet melody cements your doom. Because of their size, they aren't very stealthy, and having no armor leaves them very vulnerable to attacks. So they lie in wait, singing their tune. Similar to its distant Jurassic ancestor, wait, dragons are an offshoot of dinosaurs? <laughs> the Death Song possesses extra cervical vertebrae, which, when expanded into their frills, allow it to project its call to specific targets up to one mile away. <laughs> I mean, that's just specific targets. Wolves can howl up to 10 miles, so very deadly. So the siren is a part of their hunting strategy, and it's a complete mystery in how it hypnotizes dragons into a certain spot. This ability, of course, doesn't work on dragons who are deaf. Apart from Thornado, he can hear stuff just fine. Blast! Thus, the weakness of this allure, if the song can't be heard, then the creature can't be hypnotized and lured in. Death songs not only use their melody as hunting, but also as a form of communication. This has some inspiration from birds and whale songs, as I believe some dolphins and whales have their own unique sounds to communicate with each other. I'll go a bit more into depth with it when I make my own video of it. But for now, this isn't the only bizarre thing about this dragon. It can fire amber. I wouldn't even know where to begin with the logistics of this. But all we know, it hardens on impact. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your dick. You can use flames to weaken it. Methods like smearing monstrous nightmare gel on it, or having it on a sword. Oh, and the mighty jaw of this creature. So this whole animal is a bit of a huh? Which is fitting on the mystery class. Now, earlier I pointed out this dragon wasn't very stealthy, but that's because I believe not all dragons need to hit the, all the specific check marks, just more so the majority of them. And this dragon definitely fits the air of mystery and uniqueness, which comes with the mystery class. So, a very unique mystery, right? Well, there's an exact clone called the Slip. Slither Song. There are minute differences that I believe classes dragon as a close relative, but nonetheless, due to very similar traits, this also would fall under the mystery. This dragon can lure you in with its enchanting melody, then immobilize you with its furious strike. The Slither Song shoots its opponent with an amber attack that will harden and leave them unable to move. So the exactly the same in abilities and hunting strategies, which has given the Death Song a slot on the mystery class. So of course it will do the same with the Slither Song. The only differences I can find are the colorizations of the pattern, be mainly blue and black stripes, and physical features like smaller proportional wings, meaning they fap, I mean flap faster, a wider lower jaw, thinner legs, smaller frills, and the spikes of the back are bigger. I think they're trying to compensate for something. In the games, the Slither Song's movement patterns are slightly different from the Death Song. So, oh, very unique. 
onto something more unique and the poster child of the mystery class, the chameleon-like dragon, the Changewing. From its namesake, it's clear that it can camouflage, which to a Viking could be mysterious. But at this point, a few dragons have this ability and even a couple outside the class, so perhaps not. They camouflage by changing the color and texture of their scales to their surroundings, very similar to real life animals like chameleons and cuttlefish. They do this to escape, but also sneak up on their prey. Being a dragon that can go invisible to the eye perfectly matches the stealth and fear section of this class. A Changewing's acid can melt almost anything. Rock, wood, dragon proof chains and metal. Oh well, not metal, otherwise Snotnail's brains would be sludge if it isn't already. It's a viscous, corrosive liquid spewing from the mouth. This comes from the common tropes of reptiles and cartoons spitting this type of acid. I don't know why, very few reptiles spit venom, let alone thick, corrosive one. But that's not all in their arsenal of mystery. Changewings have a very unsettling ability to hypnotize humans and dragons, luring their prey, transmitting commands which the sole victim must follow unless snapped out of the trance. And we don't know what to required for that. A loud bang or music opening a portal? Wow, I wrote this when Strange Things was relevant. <laughs> it's completely unknown how they do this. Visually, they dilute their pupils into slits and let them spin. But other than that, it's a complete mystery. Class dragon. Mmm, <laughs> how sweet. Wait, is that a naked mole rat? No, it's the sweet death. It takes a lot to resist the temptation of the sweet death. That's from their tree-like tongue sending out a sweet aroma, leading their prey closer to get snapped up in their jaws. This is somewhat quite a common hunting technique in the animal kingdom. Snapping turtles use their tongue to look like small fish, so slightly larger fish will go, mmm, free snack, then snap. The sweet death also has an acid blast like the change ring, thick corrosive acid with a sweet scent. The dragon likes burrowing, which makes sense with its small eyes and earthworm-like body. It mostly does this for stealth, hiding away, making more and more Vikings fearful of that odd sweet smell. So, with two abilities pretty much identical to the other two mystery class dragons, it's safe to assume it belongs in this class too. The next category is unique slash unexplained ability. These dragons have a single trait that are completely baffling, but may have one or two other abilities similar to previous dragons. <laughs> For instance, the Dromillion. A titan wing of this dragon can camouflage like the change wing, using it to sneak up on enemies and fleeing if need be. So having the same level of stealth and fear factor. I don't know why the normal ones don't, but okay. These creatures are known as parrots of the dragon kind, being able to mimic any dragon fire types they come across. Which is like, <laughs> what? Each dragon biology supports its own firepower, like the Gronkles with the two stomachs. Yet the Dromillion can just copy that? And just by seeing it once? This is completely baffling, and to be honest, this just chalks up to cartoon logic. It gives the dragon its class, but do you know what makes them scary though? The fact that they are intelligent. They can mimic any firepower and combine them. A pack of them learned how to break through dragonproof chains by watching them. With additional pack behavior comes new strategies these dragons adopt. If so really, if it wasn't for the mimicking firepower, this Dramonian could have been strike. Well, does it have a speed of one? Next is the Flight Mare. Ghost-like in appearance, the legend says the flight mare is so terrifying it actually freezes their prey in their tracks, which isn't too far-fetched from reality. One of the very unique aspects of the dragon is its firepower, a toxic mist that temporarily paralyzes the victim. It can be fired in a blast or in streams depending on the dragon's tactics. A deadly strategy fitting of a species once belonging in the fear class. The Vikings don't know why the mist paralyzes, perhaps it's due to the algae it eats, but there are many more unexplained and unique parts of this creature. The body glows as the algae eats makes it do that? Very weird substance. Giving me similar vibes to deep sea fish using bright light to lure in their prey. But the flight mare seems to know how to manipulate it. As after consuming some, it can glow even brighter, to the point of nearly blinding anyone that's looking at it. Its speed and agility is nothing to scoff at either. Even being durable and withstanding onslaughts of dragons. Lastly, the banshee-like scream. Honestly, it doesn't really add too much to the mystery, but makes the dragon quite terrifying. With abilities unable to be explained by the common viking, and heavy fear around the beast, and Targeting almost anything that moves proves why this dragon belongs here. Going from petrifying to pickle bogies? Oh, sorry. Prickle Boggles. We haven't seen much of this dragon, but what we do know is very interesting. The dragon fires an ice blast, sparkly mist-like ice similar to that of a flight mare, but the blast could do damage like normal firepower or heal the target. Yes, this dragon has healing properties, curing elements of wounds with a soothing ice. I imagine that's been inspired by giving ice packs after being hurt. Oh, Johnny, help me. Take the ice pack. It's also a defensive dragon, giving resistance to most attacks. Wow. This dragon would be a perfect tank for a D&D &D party. Oh my god. 
a DD has strange dragon. But yeah, how does it heal? But the Vikings don't know and I don't either, so hence why it's in the mystery class. From healer to creeper, the silk spanner from the Dragonvine comic is very creepy, and the best spider dragon despite the two utter failures following. But honestly, anything a spider could do, this dragon could do better. <laughs> Climbing vertical walls and rocks, weaving webs in order to glide across the islands, or even use the web to float on the water's surface. But the big mystery is this firepower, or how it makes silk to fire. <laughs> but anyway, this dragon has a very unique ability compared to other dragons, and a way of traveling using it. No other dragons in the original series has the ability, and thus a mystery class dragon. Ooh, a cavern crasher. This is a weird flightless dragon with strange abilities. The main mystery is around the flammable mucus it secretes from its body, similar to that of a monstrous nightmare gel. It can launch its substance and light it up with its green fireball, very interesting color. It can also use its mucus, coupled with a collapsible skeleton to squeeze through any tight gaps in the rocks. Very unique adaptation for its environment. And like the silk spanner, it too can scale walls. At first glance, due to the similarities with the nightmare gel and its own substance, you could argue the case of Stoker class, but the weakness of this mucus is more fire, which evaporates the fluid, instead of increasing the flame like the gel. I believe they serve a different enough roles to warrant the different class. Plus the rarity of the dragon, burrowing, and speed for high stealth in dark caves where its natural habitat is, accumulate it to be a mystery class dragon. The newest out of the legacy dragons of this list is the Tormentipede. It's so new, I started writing about this video before it was revealed in the interview. As a result of it being a little bit hinted at in the unreleased comic, we don't know too many details, and some stuff could change if they actually ever make the comic. Hashtag release fire tides. So we're going to work off what we know. The author Richard Hamilton is 100% sure it fits into the mystery class, and I'm inclined to agree through one gimmick we know it has, attaching itself to the host as an appendage, somehow feeding off the host's emotions, causing it to behave like them. And that's all the info we really have from it. Other than that, we know it looks similar to a centipede, and that it breathes fire, getting stronger with more oxygen, which is how normal fire works anyway. I guess the lack of knowledge about the dragon favours it for being a mystery. And going off in slight tangent for my own thoughts, it is somewhat small, only as big as an arm, so I can see it being very sneaky as well and fit into tiny gaps. It being like a centipede is very creepy and very unnerving, which all feeds into the characteristics of a mystery class dragon. Last in this category is the Great Forever Wing. An alpha dragon. Straight away, this dragon has specked a lot into stealth, as uh, despite its massive size, a tribe of people has settled on it. Without them even knowing, its skin is wood or earth-like in texture, with foliage thriving on its back. But some of the unique aspects of this dragon is its telepathy, as it tries to communicate to Hiccup. Means and motivation remain a complete mystery. It produces a calming compound with sedative effects, leaving the target to sleep for long periods at a time. I'm not too sure if this is truly canon, as this is a Titan's Uprising only feature, but it can manipulate plants. I personally like the idea that it can do that ability, but it is up to you. I would mention the Alpha Command, but it's a shared ability across all Alpha Dragons, and many classes as a result. It's more so of a thing that happens rather than a special ability. All dragons can kind of become Alpha. The only thing left to mention is the firepower. Nothing too special to ride home about, but the Forever Ring spews copious amounts of lava, and again, a Titan's Uprising only one, ejecting acids similar to those we've mentioned before. But apparently because it's a lot weaker than the village destroying lava, they tend to prefer the latter. It's up to you whether or not the Titan's Uprising exclusive abilities are canon or not, but even without them, the dragon flits into the mystery class alone with its camouflage, and some other mysterious ways. The next class is the miscellaneous, the not quite not category, as these dragons don't fit into any other class. So I guess the mystery would do, as it's kind of the dumb stuff for any dragons not fitting in. So the first example is the Slitherwing. <laughs> There isn't anything really mysterious about this dragon. The main attributes it has is the poison secreted from its body and the venom it injects into their prey or spit, showing many similarities to poisonous frogs and cobras in real life. This is very potent. Even a skin-to-skin -skin transmission gets into the victim's bloodstream and can kill a viking or a dragon within the same day. Symptoms of the poisoning include green patches on the skin, pale discoloration, fatigue, and increasing pain. I don't want to be within a mile of this thing. This is one species that I wouldn't mind the dragon hunters making extinct. In combination with its incredible stealth, like like a snake, and speed makes it a very fearful dragon to come in contact with. I like the colorization as well, confusing their victims with bright colors, but it also serves as a warning too. Don't touch me, bro. Like many poisonous species in the real world. Again, not too mysterious, but very fearful. This is a strong candidate for bringing back the fear class, but for now, it remains a mystery. Next is the Hot Gobbler, a dragon that has two classes. I have opinions about that, which is going to be explained into another video. Hint, 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 hint. The Hot Gobbler fits into the mystery class in a lukewarm way, and it doesn't really fit into any other arbitrary categories 
set, so I'm putting it into the miscellaneous section. Honestly, the biggest mystery about these dragons is that we don't really know too much about them, although Gobber is convinced they are a bad omen. Right, into the fear cast you go. Perhaps it's due to their feeding frenzy that can eat through almost anything, stripping a wooden deck into seconds. Coupled with their impressive draw strength, their ability to chew is unprecedented. I guess that's the mystery part. How do they eat through anything? They just swallow, innit? <laughs> are they like Guzzlord, who just has a black hole in their stomachs? Or is it just the cartoonification of a piranha? A bit of both, I see. And it's such large amounts for their size. But that ability kind of reminds me of Boulder class. You know, eating objects to regurgitate it later. And their body proportion suits it as well. Small wings and round rotund body. So I could see an argument for both. According to the School of Dragons, they have very basic fireball firepower. So nothing too special. Uh, their saliva is very flammable. That's from the Nine Realms. Take that information with a pinch of salt. Due to what they did to others, they breed like rabbits. Not really mysterious. Um, they just fuck. They could just reproduce fast. And judging how they behave, going into a bit of speculation. They kind of look like they are scouts to look for potential homes for their increasing population. Hence why some just appear from nowhere. And then when you look back, there's just more. And on that note, they are very stealthy. Surprising Gobba many times. <laughs> With them just appearing, very mischievous personality. It's like they could just teleport, but I imagine they're really quite fast and have impressive stamina, especially if they flew from Berg to Newburg. Unless they just hitch a ride onto other dragons, which makes more sense to be honest. But that's the thing that keeps them into the mystery class, alongside their weird eating habits. Kinda mysterious, but it doesn't really fit into anything else, so it's here. The last example is the Buffalord, the most cow-like out of all the dragons. And I'm not talking about a Karen. In all honesty, reading the description of all the abilities, I'm struggling to place this dragon in any class. It's so... Plane? The eruptive firepower is indicative of a Stoker class, creating plumes of fire clouds, reaching far and high powered, but it needs more to go into that class, like setting itself ablaze. So why not Sharp? It has spines it shoots, but is not precise nor have any toxins to supplement it to confirm its class placement. And the spine shot is connected to its inflation. Pyro, don't get excited. It doubles its body size by, I'm assuming, sucking in air around it? Similar to that of a puffer fish, although they just suck in water. Well, although a unique ability, it's not quite mysterious. Perhaps because it's very unusual, so then I guess mystery. Wait, there's no stealth or speed to speak of? And any fear factor is gone by just sitting there in the middle of the field grazing on grass. It's a cow with wings with pufferfish DNA. <laughs> It has strength, durability, body armor, and horns comparable with that of a boulder or tracker class dragon. But again, we're missing a couple of key features. They're eating rocks. The smelling abilities? Maybe it has something like that. It's not a title, because it doesn't go swimming. That's it. It's clearly a strike. <laughs> Look at it go. Well, as it doesn't really fit in anywhere else, so I guess the mystery works. Personally, I like to put the buffalo into a tracker class and study to see if it has better senses. It has large nostrils and able to track down the iron and its unique food is on. But as it's on evidence, it stays where it is. Here are the dragons that should belong into another class. Either abilities, habitats, or general aesthetic that matches the description of more of others. This is why these dragons are not Misty class. I say these, it's just the one. The Sandbuster Dragon. It's a very interesting specimen. It kind of has the weirdness and the vibes of a mystery, but its abilities scream boulder class. Let me explain. First, the firepower shoots out heated sand that could bounce off of a surface, which then solidifies into glass on impact. Think of it as Minecraft cooking a sand to make glass in a furnace. That's this dragon. So how does it get the sand to shoot? By ingesting it. <laughs> like how other boulder class dragons ingest rocks. I mean, sand is still rocks, which is very fine. It burrows underground, swimming through the sand, as it's very sensitive to the sunlight, showing similarities to the Whispering Death. The stealthiness is kind of debatable, as a couple of times the riders actually notice the dragon before it approaches, and then again when it attempts an ambush, it does sneak up on them, even though 50% of the time it fails. The very fact that it eats rocks and blasts them later is the very definition of a boulder class. In tandem with its habitat being underground, and the way it hunts implementing its environment, setting up a sand trap like a spore spider. Ignoring the small wings bit, because like half of the dragons in that class have normal sized wings compared to their body size anyway. Um, being picky eaters. Well, that's debatable. We don't know much about their diets, but they don't seem to be against a Viking meal. The only significant argument I can see against this, that its skin isn't tough or rock-like. It seems quite rubbery and soft. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so this dragon is not mystery class, in my opinion. 
Honestly, the original description is fairly vague and covers any dragons that don't really fit into any other class fairly well. Unless one of these dragons have very clear, distinctive features of another class, pretty much belongs here. And kind of unfortunately for the video, none of these dragons really have that misplacement. I mean, I can see an argument for the Sandbusters to say where it is. Why is it sensitive to sunlight? I don't know, because of its pale Irish ass just stays inside all day. If you really want to count the miscellaneous section as the not section as well, uh, that's understandable. That one's such a cop out. <laughs> Most like middle ground <laughs> this series will probably ever be, to be honest. As I said before, this is the class that dragons go if they don't fit anywhere else. So that is the not mystery class video. Thank you very much for watching. Just a little bit tidbit at the end. Uh, those who don't care, you piss off now. But for those who are interested, there will be a poll to see which class you want me to cover next. Those who would join my Patreon will get exclusive sneak peek behind the scenes and maybe a bump in the influence to see what content you would want to see next. Oh, and get access to videos days early. I really want to give thanks to these people for the amazing artworks for the Tormentipede section. Please support these artists as much as you can. I don't know, maybe give them a cheeky like or a cheeky follow on Twitter. <laughs> Again, a huge thank you. They are amazing. I've literally been working on this video on and off for a whole year. And I promise the next one won't take as long. Thanks again. TTFN. That's all for now.